a little over two weeks ago was UFC 214. It was one of the most highly anticipated fights in UFC and MMA history. It was John Jones versus Daniel Cormier. And ever since then, a lot of you have been asking me, how's Daniel doing? How's he feeling? Have you heard from him? And at first I was texting him, but then I gave him some space. Spoke to him on Friday, said he's ready to break his silence. And it means more than he knows, you know, anyone knows that he would come on this program and talk to you all first here. What an honor it is to be talking to Daniel Cormier. He joins us now via the phone. DC, are you there? Yeah, man, I'm here. How are you? I'm in the ba- I'm good, man. I'm in the Bahamas. I was on my honeymoon and uh, I'm just kind of hanging out. Well, again, uh, e- even more so, adding to what I was just saying, the fact that you're calling us on your honeymoon uh, is, is a huge honor. So I really, really appreciate the time. Um, let, let's talk about what everyone wants to know first. Just how, how are you doing in the aftermath? We knew how important the fight was for you. We knew how much, you know, how much it meant to beat John Jones, to get in there and show that you're the better man. Uh, unfortunately it did not go your way. How are you handling it a little over two weeks later? Oh man, you know, still pretty bummed out. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's a tough pill to swallow. You know, you got to remember, you know, I'm a guy that, I'm a guy that, that, that wants to be the best. You know, I, I train hard. I work hard. And um, I feel like I was ready to go. You know, I feel like I was prepared, you know, and, and I was very disappointed, you know, in, in the result of the fight. But as I've looked back on it, you know, I was, I was, I was upset. But uh, I think a lot of the sadness came from, I feel like my coaches, you know, I felt like they had done such a tremendous job of preparing me for this particular event. And then for me to not be able to get the, uh, get the job done. Uh, that's where I think a lot of my sadness, uh, came from, you know, obviously I was disappointed with the fight, but I felt bad for the people closest to me because I felt like they had invested so much and had done so much to prepare me. And, uh, I was ready to go. I'm sure at some point in the buildup to the fight, you thought about what if, what if it doesn't go your way? And, and I'm sure you didn't want to harp on that. Um, in the aftermath, I, I know it hurt you very much. We saw it on your face. I, I know how much it meant to you to beat him. Does, does it hurt more than you thought it would? Um, I can't really say it hurt more than I thought it would. I mean, I knew that if it didn't work out, it would be very disappointing. Uh, I don't, could you lower the music, please? I don't, um, I don't, you know, in the buildup, I didn't, I didn't really think about if it didn't go that way. You know, okay. I was, I was preparing to win. You know what I mean? I think if you start allowing the doubt to creep into your mind, uh, it becomes a reality. So for 12 weeks, I, I my reality was that I was going to get my hand raised. Um, me being disappointed and sad is, uh, it just shows that, you know, it means a lot. You know, it might mean too much. You know, I guess, I guess uh, we as athletes need to be able to better separate, you know, those things. But for me, it's not like that. You know, I'm a guy that, that really does commit myself 100% to a goal. And when I didn't get it done, uh, you see the emotion, you know, honestly. Have you watched the fight since then, since it actually happened? Have you watched it no. since the 34? You can't or you don't want to? No. I haven't watched the fight. I, uh, I think it's, it, 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 it was, um, so right now, so far, I'm still kind of playing a guessing game, you know, as to how the fight was going and, um, how, how, how everything played out, you know, because I ask people around me, you know, like my coaches and my friends, you know, they'll talk to me about the fight. And then, uh, from what everybody tells me, I think watching the fight would probably do more harm than good because they were saying that we were fighting pretty even up until the kick. And then, uh, I think it would maybe disappoint me and I'm not sure I'm ready for that emotionally yet to, to watch that, especially if, uh, if they are telling me the truth in regards to how the fight was going. Um, and it was such a simple mistake. And I think that's, uh, that's why, uh, it, it, it sucks because, um, don't miss head kicks like that, you know? And it's not like it was a, it was a head kick off of a punch combination or, 
anything like that. You know, you watch uh, Donald Cerrone, uh, when he lands that beautiful combination on Rick's story, you know, you can see how the head kick would land. But with this one, it just seemed like he was trying to keep me off of him. It was kind of like a kick to that. And, and uh, I missed it. It just got me right on the right spot. I remember thinking a kick, like, reaction was like, I was like, wobble. I was like, well, what just happened? Because I really felt as though, like, Rumble had kicked me hard. But I uh, just landed on the side of my head, made my body uh, just go kind of like wobbly. I couldn't like I couldn't get my footing. And then you know John's a great finisher. Uh, and uh, once I fell, it was over. If I could have stayed on my feet, gotten to the cage and clinched or something, maybe I could have woke, had enough time to recover. But uh, once I fell, I was just kind of lost. I had no idea why. I was like lost. Like my body wouldn't do what I, I wanted it to do. And I couldn't, I couldn't really like, I couldn't really figure out what was going on, honestly. In the aftermath, I don't know if you've seen this, but a clip emerged of you two talking about your first fight prior to UFC 178. Of course, you ended up fighting him for the first time mm -hmm. in 182. And you talked about this, this sequence. You talked about, you know, this opening that you thought that he may think that he has with you, the head kick, the left head kick and things like that. Have you seen this? And was this something that you always felt was a, was a hole in your game? There weren't many, but it's, it was just kind of eerie to see this conversation happen three years ago. I'm, thank you. I've seen, I've seen the, uh, I've seen the clip. I mean, obviously I was a part of the clip, so I know yeah. that it happened. Um, but honestly, it was just like, uh, it was, it was, uh, it, 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 it happened, but again, I'm not exactly sure, uh, that really kind of relates because I, I'm talking about before I used to really dip into kicks. Like I would literally always take my head off to the side to evade punches, uh, with rumble. Uh, when I broke my nose, I literally put my face right into the kick and then he tried to kick me again and I dipped my head back to that side again. And he missed with this one. I didn't dip. Uh, I had trained. Um, I thought I had, uh, shored up those, that, that area. So I was standing straight up when I got kicked. Now, I think the key to the sequence was that he had kicked me and tried to knee me and stuff in the body a lot. And the time that I got kicked, I was anticipating the body kick. So I went to block the body and the kick went high. But again, it was just me going forward. Uh, trying to pressure him, and it got it hit the kick got up fast. He really kicked up there fast, and um, I didn't I didn't guess right because I mean he kicked he had he threw head kicks prior to that, you know, and I blocked them, but it only takes one. Um, what have you made? And again, I know that you have kind of kept a low profile, but uh, as I mentioned right after, you have received more love and admiration coming off a loss than perhaps after any of your wins, which is kind of mind-blowing because I've often felt mm -hmm. that you are the most you know, underappreciated champion in UFC history. Have you seen this? And what has it meant to you to see so many people reach out to you? It's, it's meant a ton. You know, every day I get hundreds of messages of people saying, hey, we miss you. DC, come back. You know, we wanna, you know we, what's going on? Are you okay? And I think, I think what matters the most is not the people saying, come back and fight. You know, we want to see you fight again. It's the people that are just genuinely seem to be concerned for your well-being. You know, how are you? Are you okay? How are you doing? I hope you're fine. And uh, we're worried about you. It's stuff like that that matters. You know, there, there are a lot of people uh, in this game that, that truly do care. And, and you, don't, you don't necessarily anticipate that. Especially after these last couple of years where it's been uh, the way that that has been, but, um, I think people, when, when people know their true selves, whenever they know someone's down and, uh, they want to try to help you, uh, rebuild yourself. It's a great feeling. Any particular message or person that reached out to you that really meant a lot? Uh, you know, man, honestly, uh, it was weird, you know, because there are hundreds of, of, of people, you know, in almost daily hundreds of messages saying, get your head up champ. You know, you're good. You all, you did it the right way. And uh, I don't want one person to stand out above the other, but you know, Charles Barkley is a guy that I used to watch when I was growing up playing basketball. And, uh, I had no idea that, that Charles Barkley would have known who I was 
would have watched me, would have, you know, anything. And, and uh, he sent me a message telling me how proud of me, him, and a lot of the other uh, guys that have retired, guys that are playing in the NBA are of me and the way that I've carried myself and represented. So uh, I think that one was, was big because he didn't text me from an unknown number or anything like that. He took his cell phone and got my number, went out the way to find my number and, and reached out and said, hey, D.C., you know, we're proud of you, man. You have done a tremendous job of representing yourself, the UFC, and, and your family. So your team coaches, all that. You go, so keep your head up. Be proud of yourself for all that you have done. And I think that that kind of meant a lot because that was somebody from my childhood that I never truly anticipated hearing from. Wow. That gives me chills. That's amazing. Um, and obviously yeah, well-deserved. Yeah, it was uh, crazy. Um, Joe Rogan received a lot of flack for speaking to you afterwards. Do you hold any ill will towards him? Do you wish that that didn't happen? How do you feel about that sequence after the fight? I don't. I don't hold any ill will towards him. I, I think he was doing his job. Uh, I don't hold any ill will towards John McCarthy. John McCarthy gave me plenty of opportunities to stay in this fight. I couldn't. Uh, the Joe Rogan interview. I don't even know what happened. I don't. I still haven't seen it. And honestly, Ariel, man, like, I'll be honest with you, I'm still missing time. Like, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember leaving the octagon. I don't remember uh, some of these photos where I was crying and I was, like, hugging Bob. I don't remember any of that. I, I remember uh, being in the back. I feel like I came out of a fog. Like, I remember uh, when I was in the back, I kind of just, like, they said, you have to go to the hospital. I'm like, to what? And... uh I, I just, I'm still missing time. I, I'm missing probably, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, you know, I, I talked to Dana and I said, I'm, I'm sorry if I pushed you. Cause I remember I, they, they said I pushed somebody and I was like, really? And, uh, you know, obviously I do the TV stuff. So I've got friends in TV and they said, um, they said that as they were watching me in the outfit, you could hear the microphone on Bob Cook. And, uh, I was asking questions as to what happened. Asking my dad, he yelled at me, uh, uh, then they said, like, I was in there and I was kind of like, you know, tearing up. And then they said, I looked up at the uh, the replay and that's when I really broke down because I guess I saw what happened. I, but I still don't, I don't, I don't recall that. But again, you know, tears mean that it tears and sadness means that it means something to you. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would do the same thing again. John Jones has actually been very uh, complimentary towards you. Uh, he said that, you know, you are a role model for him as a father, as a human being. He said afterwards, a week later, when he was doing media here in New York, that he hopes that you guys can bury the hatchet. Um, there aren't a lot of black fighters in this sport, and, and he doesn't want to be in this feud with you anymore. Have you heard any of his comments? Do they mean anything to you? Do you want to try to bury the hatchet with John? I haven't really uh, paid much attention to it. You know, I've been really focusing on myself and just uh, my family. Uh, I don't really like, I don't really like have, it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to become of John Jones or what happens in the future. But for me personally, you know, I just kind of want to just live my life. You know, I, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really address anything that happened with, with him and I right now. You know, it's a it's a mute point. But to think that all the bad things that have been said and all the uh, negative comments towards each other could just be completely uh, gone would be unrealistic. But in terms of coexisting in this sport, we have to. How can I not see or be around John Jones when my jobs are – so closely tied to the UFC. So, and that sense, I will be a professional, but, um, outside of that, I don't really, I don't really know. You know, I thought that we fought, I thought we fought a good fight. I yeah. thought we were both fighting at the highest level of mixed martial arts and, uh, a good strike landed that ended the fight. I've always respected him in that sense, though. I've never, I've never once questioned the type of competitor he is. He's a fantastic competitor, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just hope that at this point, uh, now that he has the belt back and he's the UFC champion again, and the limelight will be brighter than ever, that he can handle it. You know, I really do wish him the best in that sense. The, this might be an unfair question to ask you right now, but I'm just curious, considering how it all went down. 
Do you think you, you will fight again? Do you care to fight again? Do you want to keep going? Uh, yeah. I mean, why would I, why would I stop fighting? You know, I, I feel like I still love the competition more than anything. You know, that's, that's really what drives me, you know, like when, when I don't have competition and I'm not in something like that, I'm, I'm miserable, man. You know, I, I love to compete. I love to be in, in the, in the environment. I mean, uh, not only am I going to fight again, but I do believe that John Jones and I will fight again. So yes, I have a desire to fight. And, um, I believe that him and I will compete again before it's all said and done. Wow. So that, that's interesting because, uh, you said afterwards, and I know you probably weren't a hundred percent there, but you even said it before the fight, which I disagreed with. You said there, there was no rivalry now because you lost twice. And I don't think that that is true, but why, what in your mind lets you think that like, is there a path already that you already see going back to him? Or have you let your mind go in that direction and start to think about the road back to him? I don't know. Thank you. I don't know exactly what, path leads to could you lower the music for a second please i don't know exactly what path leads back to a fight with jones but um i anticipate he'll be the champion and i don't believe that anyone else in this division can compete with me so after i win another uh, en- enough fights uh i believe we'll fight again also uh we make money together and yeah. uh when you make money together the ufc is is usually pretty open to uh to making those matches have you thought about going to heavyweight and trying to accomplish Uh, you know being one of the few guys who have ever won two belts in two divisions you know man i uh i've really gotten like i've really shrunk myself from heavyweight you know i used to have big old traps and i was a bigger guy than i was when I fought at heavyweight, but you know, I didn't entertain anything, you know, the USC values me and, and, um, you know, honestly, and they've already reached out with some ideas about me fighting. And I was like, well, I need time, but yeah. there are, there are, there are options at heavyweight and options at two Oh five. Obviously the Jimmy Manoa fight is a fight that could happen. Uh, you know, Vulcan Ozemir has done fantastic for himself. A guy that's a cool guy, but you know, if if the easiest path back to fighting the fights that I want is to go through somebody like that, then I'll do it. You know, so it, it it's a matter of just what I decide to do. It at this point, Ariel, um, I've kind of gotten, I've kind of gotten, uh, I've gotten to a point in my career where the UFC, they really are, they really are uh, very open to, to a lot of my suggestions. You know, in this last two and a half years since I fought Jones the first time uh, through now, you know, I've sold headline cards or cards that I was supposed to headline or had marquee fights on this sold over, you know, millions and millions of pay-per-views. And, and with that comes some respect within the organization. Yeah. Uh, is it fair to say you'll probably make, I mean, we've seen some early reports about the pay-per-view numbers. They're phenomenal. Um, will this be the biggest payday of your career? Uh, this payday will be a very nice payday in line with UFC 200 and, uh, oh, right, right. in line with UFC 182, you know, okay. again, like I, oh, may have lost him there for a second. We shall reconnect. did almost a million, a million pay-per-views and then all the other pay-per-views that I have headlined with Rumble Johnson and Alexander Gustafson. So, uh, this will be a big pay- payday, but um, it is in line with UFC 200 and uh, UFC 182. Um, you've had a busy year, even you know having to pull out at the last minute of the Toronto card. Is it fair to say you're probably going to take the rest of the year off that we won't see you fight again in 2017? Yeah, I think that's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty safe bet. You know, I, I think. I'm going to get back to training and just kind of grappling, but I'm spending time with my family. I mean, I missed the entire summer because of training camp. I missed a lot of the springtime because of the April fight, you know, so I'm going to spend time with my family. Uh, I'm with Selena now in the Bahamas. Uh, then in a couple of weeks, we're going out to Hawaii and I have to get back to work. You know, I got some color commentary jobs coming up. I've got UFC tonight, you know, so I'm a busy guy, man. So, 
I'm always going to be working, but in terms of the fight game, you know, I'm going to go back to the gym and start helping to prepare uh, all of the other guys that we have uh, getting ready for fights. At this point, Daniel, considering the the reaction to the fight and, and people, you know, being upset about seeing you emotional and, and, and things of that nature and just seeing mm-hmm. the support that you've received, what do you think the the sort of lesson will be in all of this? Because I think sometimes in life, we, we, we tend to get emotionally attached to people, as you mentioned, who we see pour their heart out and sometimes don't succeed. But in some ways that almost makes you more relatable, more likable. Do you think at some point you'll be able to kind of look back on all of this and, and find a silver lining? Do you think that in, in some ways that this makes your legacy even, even greater, as, crazier, as crazy as that may sound? I, I feel like people can relate to those who don't quite achieve what they want to achieve, but at least gave it their all. That's the lesson that I'm getting out of this. Like people can really relate to you now because they know how much you wanted it. And for whatever reason, it didn't work out, but they know that you gave it a hundred percent. I think that that's a lesson that we can teach a lot of people. What What do you think when, when people will look back on all this, what will they say? Uh, I, you know, I've always said that I want people to think that when I fought, you know, I gave them 110%, you know, so I think they'll see that. Um, I think they will respect my effort. You know, they will respect my hard work. Um, I've always been open and honest and genuine, you know, it's just in this situation, they saw me at my lowest professionally, you know, and I, I, I'll let, I'll let it, I'll let it happen. You know I mean? This is not, this is not new. I've done this. I've cried every time I lost wrestling matches. I've cried every time I lost in pretty much anything, you know, it's just, when I'm when I'm committed to something, it means so much that that when it doesn't work out, the emotions do come out. I would expect people to say, you know what, man, this guy wears his heart on his sleeve, you know. Um, yeah, but the silver lining is is uh, the silver lining. It's great that people are supportive, but the silver lining does not erase the bottom line. Mm-hmm. The bottom line is that I didn't get the job done. And, uh, that's what sticks with me, you know? And, and, uh, so those are the things that I have to go back and, uh, and work on not only, uh, from a fighting standpoint, but just from a me kind of living my life standpoint, you know, not at the end of the day, I have to accept that I did not get the job done and I'm going to have to do something very special to get the opportunity to do it again. And, uh, I'm going to. I mean, I am honestly going to work to find a way to get myself locked back in the octagon with that man. I have to. Do you feel like you won't be able to rest, like your your career won't feel complete until you do get back in there and beat him? Like it will nag at you forever? No, I mean, I mean, I, uh, I mean my, my career can be complete. I mean, I've done some amazing things in this sport. You know, I mean, not many people... Uh, do what I have done. I've made money. I've won world titles and every organization I've been in, I've been in some of the biggest fights the UFC has ever been or ever held, you know, so I've done some amazing things in this sport. Uh, competitively, I want to fight him again, you know, and I think uh, ultimately for all the dislike and everything else, it's always competitively the, the biggest thing. I, I remember every match with Kill Sanderson, I remember every match against Katsalov or the Iranian that used to beat me. I, I, those types of comp- competitions, because I've done it at such a high level, it's uh, you never you never truly let them go. They live with you, but they should because they mean so much. I was 15 years old when I lost in the semifinals of the Cadet World Championships to a Russian guy. And uh, in 2012 or 2008, I walk into the... Uh, I walk into the uh, Olympic Village, and I see the Russian heavyweight in Greco-Roman. And it, I, I look at him, and I remember I immediately. I remember that it was the guy that beat me when I was 15 years old. He's just a man now. So those things that mean so much to you, they should burn. You, 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 you deserve to let it burn. You deserve to let it uh, really stick with you. So yeah. I, I, 15 years later, I looked at that guy and, and I saw that kid that beat me in the uh, semifinal of the world championship. So that stuff always stays with you. You don't have to always dislike the person, 
But those wins and losses at such a high level, they should mean so much that they hurt whenever they don't come to you. Um, two last quick things. Do you have any serious injuries coming off the fight, Daniel? <sighs> you know, man, my nose, uh, my nose was still jacked up after the Rumble fight. You know, I... I'm an old school guy, man. I didn't go and get my nose reset. So uh, when I went to the uh, when I went to the uh, to get my physical, uh, the doctor said that my nose was still broken before the Jones fight. So I went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor, and she she looked at it and she goes, "Well, it, sh- it shouldn't stop you from fighting." And I was like, "Okay, make sure you put that on the thing so I can get cleared by the commission." <laughs> and uh, it did. So I had some breaks in my nose, but it's not. It's like chronic, you know. It's like having stuff that bother you forever so it's my nose and then honestly you know like uh we kicked each other a lot and my shins are still pretty sore uh, even two weeks later from checking and kicking uh kicking each other so yeah those are the only things nothing too bad though did you suffer a concussion i mean if i can't remember 10 minutes i'm pretty sure i had a concussion okay, I've okay. Had a con- i had a concussion when i was wrestling and uh I just don't recall those 10 minutes and I'm not exactly sure that I'm ever going to get those, 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 uh, that time back. Bob Cook tells me that in time they'll start like little details will start to come back to me. But, um, at this point I haven't started to, uh, to get those moments back. You know, I've, I've gotten a ton of support, man. You know, Rashad Evans texted me the next day and said, Hey, I cried for you because I know how bad you wanted it. And, uh, he goes, you know, keep your head up. I've, I've received so much love from these guys, man. My peers, uh, Cody Garbrandt, Dominic Cruz, all the guys have just been. I got messages from Andre Ward, uh, wow. some of the best fighters in the world, all saying, "Hey, DC, keep your head up, man. Things are gonna be okay." So, and most importantly, I have my beautiful wife who tells me every day, "You know, you've done good." Wow. Uh, that's actually my last question. It's rare to go on your honeymoon after such a big event, especially if it doesn't go your way. Have you been able to enjoy it? I have had me and Selena have a five-year-old kid and a six-year-old kid. Uh, you don't get away much whenever you, uh, some people have guilt when they leave their kids. Like, uh, it's called a buyer's remorse. I, I, I know you're very familiar with that. Um, <laughs> you, it's like, it's called buyer's remorse. You remember that? But, uh, no, we've been, yeah, we've enjoyed each other. Yeah. You're the only guy to ever have buyer remorse for like years, but <laughs> Still yeah, we, uh, we've gotten along good. We've enjoyed ourselves in the Bahamas, uh, but we're ready to get home to our children. So, and I'm a football coach now, so that's oh. a good thing. I'm one of Daniel's, uh, I'm the defensive coordinator for my son's little league football team. So that's really helped me keep my mind off everything. Wow. They will be embracing the grind. I think those kids. Those young <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, they will. You see, uh, whatever, it, whatever anyone told you about the fight, it, it is true. They are being honest. You looked phenomenal, and I'm not trying to say that to make you feel bad about it. Um, you, you are at your best, and, and it happens this game. You know it's a matter of inches, but no one thinks less of you. In fact, I think everyone's admiration and appreciation for you has only grown um, after the fight. So nothing to be ashamed of. As I said to you privately, uh, it, it is an honor to have you on the show. It's an honor to you know call, call you a colleague and a friend. And I really appreciate you coming on and talking to us all. I know a lot of people have been worrying about you and caring for you. And I think you should be very proud of that as well. So uh, get home safe, get home to your kids and take some time off. And we look forward to seeing you back. And I believe you're back on the grind this week. You'll be on UFC tonight on Wednesday, right? Back to UFC tonight, man. Make sure you guys tune in. All right, we shall do so. FS1. Uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 in the East. We shall be doing so. Thank you, DC. Yep. Safe travels. All the best to you, hey. and uh, great to hear from you. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. To all the fans, hey, thank you, guys. I, I love it. I love you guys. Thanks for the support. We appreciate you guys. All right. All right. See you later, Ariel. Thank you, Daniel. There he yeah. is, Daniel Cormier, stopping by his first interview Post UFC 214, the now former UFC light heavyweight champion. Great to hear from him. I know a lot of you wanted to hear from him and uh, truly meant a lot that he would come on the show. I can't say that enough, that he would come on and talk to you all and myself for the first time since 214. I look forward to seeing him back and some interesting comments there. Not quite ready to put it behind him. And we can certainly understand that. Happy to hear he's taking the rest of the year off. Looking forward to his comeback whenever it may be.